This is Nellie Wong reading, Being Pregnant is a Dream. You're pregnant? How can that be, you dead girl? What are you talking about? Jin Hai Fat Mong. Truly a dream. Nightmare, huh? At your age, single for so long. What did you eat? Fu Gua? Bitter melon? You know how to walk? Ho U Black Bean? Neat do see you. Many black beans macerated. Droplets of dark soy sauce. Yeah, yeah, about time. The vitamin A good for you. You know, Shen Fu Hao Hem. Ne yi tui lo, eat bitter than sweet. Never too late, cause you got head full of white hair. Cause you send him away, cause you refuse to stay married. Cause you wake up. No wonder ne fat mong. No wonder ne jong yi se do want to write all the time. Bong jong na gong yin. Help working people. Hai ya ngao nui, jin hai ngao jalo. Your head knocking around the rice bowl. Mot hai na po ma. Shi, shi. Hai la, hai la. Okay, okay, keep dreaming. Got to do something. Maybe dye your hair black. Find a new cloud. Sun Wu call monkey king there. Where, where? Maybe a sleeping stone. But I find you, Sli Nui, Voi Fun Jone. Hu Gabibi, pregnant. Jin Hai Fat Mong. True, true. You dream, dream. Till you die. About this poem. Jota from sleep, I woke up. I was pregnant. But how was that possible, even in dream or in nightmare? I never bore a child. My marriage died. And here I am, approaching my ninth decade. Perplexed, I wrote the dream down. Karen Brodine, a comrade poet, once said, when you write things down, they become true. Ali Light, a filmmaker, urged me to write my dreams down. This poem births from English and Hoi San Hua, the spoken dialect of my immigrant parents and community who migrated from southern China. Here, then, our voices live crossing borders, pregnant. Yeah.
Welcome to Song Arc. This is a series that uh, Chris and I have been doing yeah. where we take a number of songs and we find out the commonality of them. And uh, we'll do little snippets and play them for you and kind of point out what makes them uh, stand out to us. So Mike Geegan over here picked the first song that we launched this arc from and, and it's uh, Feel a Whole Lot Better uh, by The Birds. Two, ready. <laughs> Why? Oh, I can't say. I had to let you go and run away. After what you did, I can't go on. Probably feel a whole lot better when you're gone. It was a real earworm of a of a tune for me growing up, just hearing it on the radio and and then hearing the fact that they're talking about how they're gonna feel so much better when somebody's out of their life. I thought that was a pretty interesting take. Sort of uh takes the whole I love you song, you know, premise and turns it on its head. It turns it inside out, yeah. 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 And in a kind of a very sugary way, you know, because it's great hooks in it. You know, so I know that when I was you know, when we were listening to it, we were gonna Mike picked that song and it's like I was singing along to it, you know, thinking that I had half of the words. And uh, when you actually read the lyrics, you go, it's not very clearly defined it, <laughs> the way the vocals. In, the, in those days, the vocals used to be kind of pushed back in the mix, you know, as the drums would be. Yeah. And all kind of just arrived all at once because they were making, you know, mono recordings in yeah. a lot of cases. Yeah. But uh, you know, that song has you know, this couple signatures. Um, well, one, that kind of storytelling, this kind of twisted tale that uh, maybe Dylan would do, mm-hmm. and they were big fans of Dylan, yeah. but it also had that, that, uh, the rip. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, George Harrison steals that for, uh, <laughs> if I needed someone. Oh, yeah, That's what yeah. Saying. Okay. Uh, the bird's influence was, was vast, and I think that uh, the reason that we picked this song for the arc is that it spawned a lot of different, you know, just that riff and this this pop kind of nasty tune mm-hmm. uh, uh, just sort of slithered into our consciousness. Yeah, yeah. And then I remember just reading old interviews with John Lennon where he would say like the birds were like their favorite American band at that time, yeah. you know. So so there was a lot of kind of cross pollination going on between uh just the going coming back and forth across the pond. Of course the Beatles came and changed everything, but then they influenced so many things and then the birds took it from their end and and by using Dylan songs and uh, and then writing their own songs, you know they they really had a whole different sound of their own. Yeah, and uh, and the twelve string that you know that eventually ended yeah. up really really becoming a signature. But you know when we thought of that song, we were thinking like, you know what are the songs that are just direct descendants that feel a whole lot better? Yeah, well then I was thinking the next song would be uh, a gentleman who was a, a huge Birds fan growing up and who was heavily influenced by him. That would be Tom Petty. Yeah. And I remember hearing something where Roger McGuinn first heard Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers on the radio, and he's like, when did we record that song? <laughs> <laughs> because he just thought it was where, so close where to Where are my residuals? Yeah. Change, but I know everything is okay. 
about Petty is that he was not afraid to show his you know influences mm -hmm. but he packaged it in this you know in this self this singing self that uh, it just caught on with people so deeply right, right yeah right. and then when you listen to that compared to feel a whole lot better you can see just how, what a direct, I mean, it's a direct line right to it, it's really. You know. pretty darn close. The yeah. birds one is the... Yeah, and then listen to a heart is... So it's very, very similar, just right at, you know, just using that A riff, you know, with mm -hmm. lift and, you know, Tom Petty, like you said, I, as soon as he came along, even though they kind of classed him in with uh, like new wave and whatnot, it was like this guy is he's kind of like a lot more than just any pigeonhole. You know, oh, when yeah. you listen to even those first couple of albums, it's like this guy has got a lot of influences going. Well, on. you know, if you, if you bought the album before you actually heard him, and you go, oh, he's got bullets, he's wearing or whatever. Remember, he's got yeah, something. and you're thinking, and then you put this record on, I go. This is a rock and roll album. I know yeah. and the Dangers, the original uh, card that we put up at Lear's Music to try to find a lead guitar player. Yeah. And uh, John Hickman, you know, found it on the wall and it said we were looking for, you know, someone to play in a band that did original music, but we're related to bands like The Clash, you know, Costello, you know, maybe a couple of things in this is Tom Petty and then at the bottom says, Mostly Tom Petty. <laughs> it's clever. It's not pushy as a mm -hmm. song. You're going to listen to your heart. You're not going to, I'm going to shame you into liking me. It says, no, you're going to listen to what you want. Yeah. And, and I think it's kind of a grown-up rock song in the way that uh, Feel a Whole Lot Better was. Is that, yeah. you know, it, could, it could have been just Moon, June, the Spoon. It sounds like a sunny day. Yeah. But... But it's not. Yeah. I mean, there are more adult themes. And this yeah. one, there, there's rock music kind of growing up in front of us. Yeah. Then there was uh, one other thing, too, I remember reading after it had come out where, you know, the record company wanted to change one of the words because you think you're going to take her away with your money and your cocaine. Because cocaine, yeah. you figure this came out in 77-ish, 78, cocaine was raging everywhere. Yeah. And that was like a thing. Yeah. Um, and but and but Petty put his foot down and said, "No, we're not. You know, I'll just take the whole song off, or if we're going to change that word, because that's the whole point." And, and what's nice about that too is that, it, as a song, a storytelling, a song that so you know much more about this relationship and that girl in the times because of that word. You think you're gonna take her away with your money and your cocaine? This is Morst. Welcome forward to the Time Machine, a little segment where we use our digital recording technology to take us to different places in the time-space continuum. For this voyage, I'll be introducing you to a band called Carita, who played an opening set about a month ago in San Francisco at the Great American Music Hall. They were at this historic venue as an opening band for the Saturday of the annual Hipsmas holiday run by the Mother Hips, great California band, not pictured today. Hips guitarist Greg Locano, though, uh, did produce Carita's debut album and also joined him on stage during the show. I was there so I could record audio of the hips, but you never know when an opening band is going to wow you. So I like, do like to record them as well. Uh, the fellows in Caritas liked my recording, so they joined it up with their live motion camera footage that their pals made. First song they released from it is a new one called Ain't No Hippies Left in California. 
So let's hit that button and see where it takes us, huh? Turn it up loud. Punch it, Chris.
work, Karina. All right. Thanks for joining us on this week's Travel of the Time Machine. Until the last time, we'll see you next time. Or you'll see me anyhow. Good evening. Hello. Oh, I'm starting to see your names now. Very good. Very good. Chris Leroy. Do we have a stalker song, Chris? I don't know if we do. I'll sing it. I'll sing one of our nice, happy love songs in a in a in a creepy tone of voice, and then it'll sound stalkery. <laughs> yeah, I got some Tom, a Tom Petty song to do for you in a little while. Now he's got a couple of songs about this subject, and uh, I remember reading things in the paper about. Uh, yeah, my, let's just do that song. That'd be fun. Reading in the paper that Tom had uh, he had a stalker. He did. Sometimes we do his songs.
side seconds I I turned off the light switch and I came down to meet you in the half light the moon left but a cluster of night jars and some songs out of tune a man with a bright light swung down down from a roof come down in time I still heard her say so clear in my ear like it was the day I come down in time was the message she gave well come down in time and I'll Meet you halfway. Hey, hey. There are women, women, and some hold your tie while some of you counting. The stars in the night